I love this story I read from a 69-year-old woman who always seems to be bubbling with joy, even though she's been paralyzed since she was 17 years old. Here is a candid view into her world that might just look a little bit like yours and mine on some days. But she still finds joy. In Decision Magazine, Johnny Erickson Tata writes this. Honesty is always the best policy, but especially when you're surrounded by a crowd of women in a restroom during a break at a Christian women's conference. One woman, putting on her lipstick, said, Oh, Johnny, you always look so together, so happy in your wheelchair. I wish that I could have your joy. Several women around her nodded. How do you do it? She asked as she snapped the cap back on her lipstick. I don't do it, I said. In fact, may I tell you honestly how I woke up this morning? This is an average day. I breathe deeply. After my husband Ken leaves for work at 6 a.m., I am alone. Until I hear the front door open at 7 a.m., that's when a friend arrives to get me up. While I listen to her make coffee, I pray, O oh Lord, my friend will soon give me a bath, get me dressed, sit me up in my chair, brush my hair and my teeth, and send me out the door. Now please, please tune in to this next part of the prayer. I don't have the strength to do this routine one more time. I have no resources. I don't have a smile to take into the day. Now this is classic Johnny Erickson Tata. But you do, Lord. May I have your smile? God, I need you desperately. So what happens when your friend comes through the bedroom door? One of the women asked. I turn my head towards her and give her a smile sent straight from heaven. It's not my smile, it's God's. And so I said, gesturing to my paralyzed legs, whatever joy you see today was hard won this morning. I have learned that the weaker we are, the more we need to lean on God. And the more we lean on God, the stronger we discover him him to be. That's from an article called Hard Won Joy by Johnny Erickson Tada. Our circumstances in this world can suck the joy right out of us. To the point that we cannot go on, we lose our joy. It is then we must have a source outside of ourselves who can give us the joy that we need. Your question to consider today on your outline is simply this. Where will your joy come from this Christmas? Where will your joy come from this Christmas? Today in our Bibles, we'll encounter another woman who found joy outside of herself. Joy that was born through her to you and me around Christmas time. Now I'd ask you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke chapter 1. Verses 26 through 56. If you forgot your Bible this morning, don't worry. We have one on the ends of the pews, but that one is hidden under my folder, Jeremy, so you can get it if you need to. Um, they're at the ends of your pews. They're there for you to use. Um, we provide those for you for today, but also, if you do not have a Bible you can read and understand, we would love for you just to take that Bible home and call it your very own as an early Christmas gift. 
Now, I've given you plenty of time to get to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Brother Bryce always puts it up on the screen for you, too. So we got you covered either way. I'm in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses, verse 26. And I'll go all the way through 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Verse 31. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Somebody needs to just stay on verse 37 for a little while. For nothing is impossible with God. Verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Verses 26 through 38. Fearful circumstances try to steal our joy, but faith can protect it. Friend, I just want you to consider a little bit, what are the impossibilities you face this Christmas? What are those things that you just go, hmm, impossible? It's just not going to happen, but for a miracle from God. How do you have joy when you are not ready for it? How is God calling you to carry Jesus this Christmas? How is God calling you to carry Jesus this Christmas. The angel Gabriel is really the only one in this scene who seems to have joy, doesn't he? He seems to have a lot of it. He's excited about Mary and for who is coming for Christmas. Do you ever have that at Christmas? Everybody else around you is all excited. They're all pumped up about Christmas, but you're not. You're anxious. I know some folks that are downright scared about who's coming over for Christmas. But can you hear the voice of that angel? Can you watch the joy that is coming to be birthed, perhaps anew in you, this Christmas? I don't know about you, but I feel more and more like Mary every year. All of a sudden, boom, it's Christmas. Seems like the kids just went back to school after Thanksgiving break. Boom. Carols singing, bells are ringing, and I go, oh my goodness. I don't know if I'm ready for this. How do you have joy when you're not ready for it? You do like Mary, and you submit to it. Say to yourself or any angel that may be listening, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. That's the beginning of joy. Simply realize that God's plan is so much bigger and so much better than ours that we just need to say, okay. Okay, Lord, whatever you have for me this Christmas, I'll do it. So many of you 
have responded to calls to give gifts to green local schools or new destinations, haul wood, fast and pray, know that there is joy coming in your obedience. Maybe it's cooking the meal or cleaning up after it. Maybe it's talking to the crazy aunt or crabby uncle you see but once a year. Maybe it's ringing a bell for the Salvation Army. What is God asking you to do to bear Jesus to the world this Christmas? Joy is a choice. To look to God and obey Him. Here's the great thing. What may not be a joy to you just might ignite joy in someone else. Maybe even someone else inside someone else. Isn't that crazy? That's what happened. Look at, your, look at your Bible. I'm picking up at verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Verses 39 through 45, joy is shared among the brave who bear it. Joy is shared among the brave who bear it. Simple questions. Who will find the joy of Jesus in you? And who can you find the joy of Jesus in? in. My wife shared a story about going shopping recently. She was at a store and was completely amazed by the joy she saw in the man who was attending to the shopping carts. I don't know how many of you have encountered the man who's attending to the shopping carts, but they're not usually bubbling with joy. But she said, this guy, this guy was talking to people. He was, he was blessing people as they, as they were moving and grooving through the busy parking lots and the shopping area. He had a smile on his face. He, he was opening the door for people. And he was showing the joy of Jesus. She said, uh, she ended up opening the door for him at one point. And he was like, oh, thank you so much. And later on, he was sure to open the door for her. There, I got you back. <laughs> Paying the joy forward, even as the shopping cart man. What if joy we get comes from others who see Jesus in us when we can't even see it? Do you ever get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of your own life that you can't see the forest for the trees? I'm just saying maybe it's time to look around and see the joy in other people's eyes, perhaps even from what you are bringing. What do I mean? Do you spend time with people who bring you down or people that build you up? Do you spend time with people who have faith and have God working in their lives or ones that are just stuck in themselves? Mary went to see Elizabeth because she heard God was doing something in her life that was hard to believe, but she wanted in on it. She wanted to see what God was doing in her life. Is there someone that you know has something going on in their lives that God is doing? Just last night, I visited some dear people and we talked about how God had been healing them over the last year, and especially the last few years. Friends, it was inspiring to me. And if you, if you are sitting here going, you know, I just don't know anybody <laughs> that's got stuff going on in their life that God is doing, oh, I'll give you a list. 
I'll give you a list of people you can call, that you can go see, and they'll tell you what God is doing in their lives. What if you would go there and show interest in those people? What if they see God is also doing something new in you too? I wonder if Mary got more or less joyful as she approached Elizabeth's house. This took bravery. I wonder if she started to get excited or more anxious about the news. Did she think, oh boy, this is going to go one way or the other, and I'm not sure which way. But then she heard Elizabeth's words of blessing, and little John jumped for joy. Did you know that you can bring joy of Jesus, even if you're afraid, uncomfortable, or even in a mess? Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Jesus doesn't want or need you to be perfect this Christmas. He doesn't need your house to be perfect. He doesn't need your gifts to be perfect. He doesn't need the meal to be perfect. He just needs you to be faithfully brave where he would have you and to be with who he would have you to be with. How can you call out the Jesus you see in other people, even today? Can you hear it when people say they see Jesus in you? What if someone would, would just tell you, you know, I think I see the joy of Jesus in you. What would you say? Would you say, oh, no, it's us himself. Oh, it's us. No. What would happen if you would say, I received that. Thank you. I was, with, I was with some people the other day, and someone paid a compliment to a, to a man, really saying, you know, I see Jesus in you. And he said, you know, I received that. Thank you. It's a beautiful response. Listen to what happens when that happens. Verse 46 and following. Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Verse 50. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm, he has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned home. Verses 46 through 56. God helps those who can't help themselves have joy. God helps those who can't help themselves have joy. Have you acknowledged your helplessness this Christmas? Now Mary is jumping for joy. In the real-life Sunday school class, we talked about this a little bit. The word rejoice in verse 47 literally means to jump for joy. Did you know that John the Baptist in his mother's womb was rejoicing? He was jumping for joy. Mary got this. She's singing a song of great joy. It might sound a little strange to us, but to a Jewish girl in occupied territory in the first century who's pregnant with, someone, with someone's baby who's other than her fiancé, who has likely been pushed around in life, there is a jump in the air for joy because she's saying essentially, I matter to God. He knows about me, and I'm 
glad for it. I have joy for it. Look hard at verses 48 and 49. She's been noticed by God and he cares. He cares for me, little tiny me. Can you believe it? And he cares for little tiny you too. Verses 50 through 53. There's an ancient cry for the underdog. It echoes the words that we hear in 1 Samuel from Hannah way back. God is here for you. If you are humble and hungry and fearful, he will lift you up. When you can't help yourself, he will let the proud, the rich, and the self-sufficient fall flat on their faces. I love that people still, song, still sing songs like this today. The artist KB. Anybody heard the artist KB? Thank you, front row. Thank you, front row. Um, the artist KB wraps these words in a song called Drowning. Oh, he saves. Let him become your life. Feeling like you're gone too far or too far gone. Oh, my Lord loves your type. Feeling like you're running out of answers. He wants you right there. God only helps those who can't help themselves. Behold the beauty of the king of pleasures unseen. From the desert of me to the meadows upstream, drink. There's no feeling better. Never won't be satisfied. Supreme every day. No fleeing. I'm safe. This was Mary. And in truth, she represents all of us. Without Jesus especially at Christmas. We are a joyless, insignificant lot, doomed to be forgotten. This idea expands vividly in verses 54 and 55 to the nation of Israel. I heard once it was said, God chose the people of Israel not because they were the brightest and the best on the planet at the time. He picked them because they were the worst. God helps people who can't help themselves. Even a quick review of the Old Testament shows us one thing. These are the underdogs. These are whiny, fickle, hard people to love. But guess what? That's exactly who God chooses to love the most. But then Jesus comes into your life and he changes everything from the inside out, just like Mary. From fearful fretting to joyous jumping about Jesus, that can be you too, even at Christmas. But how do we do it? Do you wish you could sing Mary's song? Do you wish you had a gift to give this Christmas that the world desperately needs? That people can be so blessed by, that you will see your people liberated from their oppression by your hand and with the help of God Almighty. Where will your joy come from this Christmas? Let's review. Let's just acknowledge fearful circumstances will try to steal our joy, but faith can protect it. Faith in who? God sent Jesus to be born in you. Faith that his timing is still the best timing. What he has done for us to do, we will do. In a word, faithful obedience to God can bring joy. Will you say with Mary today, I am the Lord's servant. Somebody here needs to just spend the rest of sermon time just, just maybe with your eyes closed, just saying, I am the Lord's servant. If that's what you need to do, keep doing it. We need to see that joy is shared among the brave who bear it. I hope you will be able to see Jesus in other people and call it out in them, just like Elizabeth did. But even more so to hear it when somebody calls you out and then rejoice. Maybe even jump for joy, just so you're not on the ice. Jump for joy and rejoice that someone sees Jesus in you. This is the Christmas moment that you realize that you not only gave, but also got the perfect gift. That is, you've brought Jesus to someone, and they know it. 
and you do too. Finally, God helps those who can't help themselves have joy. Mary's song is our song. God sees us and is ready to help us have joy. No matter how messed up we are or how messed up our circumstances are, maybe you're not ready for Christmas. Either was Mary. But even now, you can say, just like Johnny from my opening story, God, I need you to give me what I don't have. The joy that Jesus can bring, even today. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for the joy that we can see in Scripture. Thank you for the joy that can come as we open ourselves to you in obedience. Lord, I pray that you would help us to reflect